guys, it's Teresa. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be filming my book review for the recently released The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sajata Massey. I've kind of decided for myself that I want to actually film individual book reviews for all 2018 releases just because I think that that's like the most relevant and I have a lot to say about this book so let's jump into it. This book is sort of historical crime mystery fiction and it's set in 1920s in Bombay in India. It follows a woman called Praveen Mystery who is the first female lawyer in India and she works together with her father at his law firm. I believe that this is going to be a series, so there's probably going to be a different case that she handles in every book. But in this one, we focus on one of her father's clients who has passed away. And um, now they kind of are dealing with the settling of his estate. The man had three wives and they have all decided to leave their own share of the inheritance to a charity and um, Perrine kind of looks at the document and finds it a little bit fishy because the signatures don't seem quite right. So Perrine decides to investigate and she gets involved in this whole thing. It turns out that the man and his three wives are all Orthodox Muslims and the wives had been living in sort of societal uh, reclusion. And because Perrine is pretty much the only female on the case, uh, she's in the unique position to actually get to talk to the widows and kind of get their side of the story to make sure that they're not being exploited by the man who's handling their estate in lieu of um, their dead husband. When a murder occurs, the whole thing turns even more dangerous and uh, the story kind of goes from there. At the same time, Praveen finds herself confronted with her past when a man that she had been kind of avoiding for the past four years returns to her life. The book kind of jumps back and forth between those two timelines. And by that I mean the timeline set in the present, 1921, when she deals with this case. And then the other one is 1916, when she meets this man and uh, kind of how things proceed from there. I found that really, really interesting because I've, while I've read some reviews that were saying like they didn't quite understand the point of this like flashback type of point of view, I really found it quite illuminating on Praveen as a person, on her background and like where she came from. I don't know, I just like really enjoyed that part. The book definitely talks about some kind of heavier subjects that are sometimes quite hard to read, particularly because, you know, she is the first female lawyer. She isn't really taken seriously by most men and um, she's often heavily discriminated against. She is um, not kind of treated nicely and it's really hard to read sometimes. What's so nice in contrast is like how her parents treat her, in particular her father. He's very, very supportive of her. Obviously, she's part of his law firm now and like he really supports her education. He supports her becoming a lawyer. He supports her like standing on her own two feet. They don't force any decisions on her. It's all very kind of like progressive for the times and I just like really love them as a family unit. So at its core, this book definitely deals with this mystery of like what happened and like how did the widows decide to desert their money and all those sort of things. But it also talks so much about um, female empowerment and about um, issues relating to that, such as like discriminatory laws towards women and domestic abuse, the exploitation of religious women that I mentioned in conjunction with these widows, just in general women's right when it comes to marriage and other things. Like it's just, it kind of touches all bases without appearing to overtly seek out to do that, if that makes any sense. I find a lot of the times books that talk about female empowerment or like that have that as their core message, they kind of do it a little too in your face and it seems like they're wanting to force their own politics down your throat. And that's not at all what I felt with this book. It all felt very organic, very like well integrated in the story and it just seems like this is a story that is being told as it is and then it just so happens to also talk about all these topics, which I really, really liked. Throughout the entire book, all these seems very accessible, very relatable. Even though I'm not an Indian woman and I'm not oppressed and anything like that, and uh, this is like, we're almost a hundred years in the future from when this takes place, I still felt myself like really, really feeling with Praveen. I got mad, you know, when, when she was faced with 
injustice and discrimination and things like that and in particular because of that and because I could feel myself like getting heated when she was in those situations I find it all the more admirable that Praveen herself often or like most times actually kept her cool in those situations and dealt with things in a really level-headed manner. I think her character is definitely what set this book apart for me because I haven't been able to kind of relate to a character just strongly or like feel with a character just strongly in a long, long time. And it just kind of goes to show that, you know, someone's race or skin color or whatever is like not the most important thing when it comes to relatability. There's just some experiences that unite us all and I just you know, I loved how well this book kind of brought all of that to life. I also really, really love the setting of 1920s India. I have never been to India, but I definitely want to go at some point. And I just love learning about the culture, especially the culture of Bombay. That's a very multicultural, multi-ethnic community. There's people of all religions and beliefs and whatnot living there. And it's just really, really an interesting atmosphere to read about. I also feel like the author did a really good job to make me feel like I'm actually there and experience it myself, which is always a plus. To me personally, the mystery that's kind of at the core of this book took somewhat of a backseat. I didn't think it was too compelling and it was mostly confusing, like I, I never called anything really, but that was I think mainly because of how confusing it, it sometimes became. Um, at the end the revelation is a little bit lackluster in comparison to sort of the build up, um, but I mean obviously kind of reading the book you realize like nothing too spectacular can be the solution anyway so yeah to me that kind of just wasn't as compelling as the rest of the book or like the rest of the other aspects of the book but I didn't really mind too much because everything else I was so in love with. Overall I think this book is very very well written it's fascinating to read and if you ad care at all about India in the 1920s or you're like a fan of historical fiction or mystery or whatever I highly recommend you read this book. I think it's really really well put together and I honestly cannot wait to read the sequels. I just hope that the author kind of steps it up in terms of the mystery but like that's that's literally my only mini gripe that I have with the book so I gave it 4.5 stars and I heartily recommend it. And that is it for my book review of The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujata Massey. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it inspired you to go out and get this book for yourself. If you have already read it, please leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of it and if you agree with my assessment. And if you're new to my channel, please like this video and subscribe for more videos every Tuesday and Friday. I will see you then. Have a lovely week. Bye!